scam. So, <laughs> uh, so <laughs> yeah, stick that. Carry on. Uh, a very good morning and warm welcome to everyone. And uh, I, Architect Smitha Roy, welcome you all to the Geetam School of Architecture webinar series from uh, Hyderabad and Ishakapatnam in the topic of successful career in architecture. And this, is, uh, this webinar is not only to inspire all the aspiring students of architecture, but also all the mentors, all the practicing architect architects, educators. And these uh, series of webinars consist on every Saturday and Sunday. And this has started from uh, August 2022. So with indeed order, uh, honor, I will also give a, a, I'd like to welcome Professor, our Director Sir, Professor G. Sunil Kumar Sir, our Professor Shravanti Ma'am, Associate Professors, and uh, all our Senior Assistant, Assistant Professors, and all our dear students in this webinar. So with due respect, now with indeed honor, I will also introduce our today's guest speaker, and uh, thank you, ma'am. So it's time to introduce our guest speaker. So our guest speaker for today is uh, uh, Professor Amrita Madan, ma'am. And uh, yes, uh, formally I'm introducing her, but I also have been associated with her since uh, 2012 when I was, and I had just enrolled in Bachelor of Architecture in, uh, in the year 2012. So at the end of the session, I will tell. So formally now I will introduce her. So Professor uh, uh, Amrita Mandan is uh, Associate Dean and Professor of uh, School of Art and Architecture, Sushant University. She is also the founding partner of Atelier Aeronomy Design. So her, uh, I will give a short biography. I'll try to cover it as brief as possible. So <clears throat> ma'am is a uh, professor, is a practicing architect since 1997. And uh, starting with her education qualification, she has done her Bachelor's of Architecture in Shashan School of Art and Architecture and also did a Master's MPhil and Master's in Landscape Architecture and Master of MPhil in uh, Ecole de Architecture de paris Pileve in Design Theories in Architecture and Urbanism and also in Landscape Urbanism. She did Master's and she has also been associated uh, for a few months with uh, Harvard Business School online in terms of executive education and disruptive study uh, strategy. And also uh, currently she's on the verge of her completion of her uh, PhD also, Doctor of Philosophy from School of Planning and Architecture, New Delhi. So now I will give a, a, her professional detail. So she has been uh, not only an educator, but she is in a practicing architect from since 1997. And uh, so her, she's the co-founder, uh, partner, founding partner of Atelier Anonomy Design, which is a multidisciplinary design work. And this firm is associated with exhibition designs, experiential design projects. Then it also specializes in architecture, interior design, graphics, building, brand building, signage, and IT solutions. And um, Amrita, Professor Amrita Madan Ma'am is not only an architect, but she has worked as a creator, a thinker, and a designer. And um, Yes, and from 2000 and uh, after that, uh, she has held, uh, before being as a professor and associate dean, she has also started her part uh, like as a visiting faculty in Sushant from 2002. And she was a lecturer. Then she started as visiting faculty. Then she also was invited as a professor in various colleges also in as a guest lecturer also. And uh, she... Yes, so from 2017, she became a full-time faculty, uh, like full-time uh, professor, and uh, she teaches both Bachelor of Architecture, Master of Architecture students, and she was also the co-studio director of Masters in Interior Architecture in Shoshan School of Art and Architecture, and also, uh, yes, so also the positions held that uh, she's also a program developer and chief curator of SSA Factor which is a training center for faculty in architecture. This has started in 2016, curator in collisions, uh, coordinator in homing series, research coordinator, and also head of uh, faculty research projects, then uh, associated with many years of uh, in master's and bachelor's, coordinator of the liberations, editor in academic work publications. And yes, from 2021, uh, she has also, she's also conclave director in IPEC, 2021 to 2022 mud future which is a global year 
multi host host multi location conclave on the futures of mud as a material in architecture and she's a uh, now she uh, she has also won women's award excellence in a uh, women's award this year and uh, <laughs> yes so there is lot to say but <laughs> yes so i tried to make it as short as possible so yes i welcome you ma'am and thank you so much for accepting the invitation so uh, it's uh, it will be really a great platform for students to listen to her looking forward to you ma'am listening to you thank you so much snigda it was uh, i mean it i was wondering when are you going to stop her sada <laughs> you were you saying too many things it's 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 a it's a life well lived is what i am feeling very good it's, it has to have certain kind of achievements i think 28 i graduated 25 years back and our students when they reach that point they will also have this you know wide plethora of things to say so some things have to be put in that context that it is 25 years in the profession a little bit of you know something i would like to say over here is that i did start as a full time faculty in 2002 okay so i have had a lot of varied stints with academics right uh, pass, and they have been full time they have been like what we call the tenure track and they have been in contract they have been as visiting and they are again as a full time so i've gone through all the stages of how uh, you know and what 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 are the ways to deal with an institution or engage with an institution while i've also been practicing so i think from the students perspective it's very interesting i have been a student in this place and this is the place i have seen from both ends uh, it's interesting to see how we can all collectively get together to contribute to the growth of the discipline to the growth of you know our institutions our alma mater and every um every contribution that we make is going to uh, you, you know it's going to matter uh, the fact of the matter is that we have very we have a lot of potential and we have people like you know the students here on this platform who are going to be our future leaders and these leaders are going to actually define that path and you know and work on that potential that we have currently so any contribution we do we are going to stand out right the fact we have to make that contribution i think i come from that perspective that all we, we, it is our responsibility it's actually our you know it's a privilege as well as the responsibility to be able to be in this position where we make a difference where we can make a difference so you will see that what i'm going to present today everyone is going to be a bit of this and a bit of that and a bit of something else it is not necessarily going to be my projects it's not necessarily going to be uh, you know the the things that i have uh, done it's also going to be the things that i have learned it's also going to be things that i have taught it's also it's going to be a bit of and i i called up snigda and i said snigda what do you want me to say there's there's so many things so she says ma'am say everything so i said okay let's be at it we i'll try and say as much as i can and uh, i hope it makes a bit of a difference and it holds us together uh, in charting our future uh, i'll just start my sharing the screen right mm. Okay, I hope my screen is visible. Yes, ma'am, it's visible. Okay, lots of people want to enter. Uh, can you see those entry admit signs? Uh, I, you, I know you are managing it, Snigda, but it will keep coming. Mm -hmm. So, um, so good uh, morning, everyone. Um, thanks for being here on this uh, uh, here in 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 Delhi, in Noida, uh, where I stay. It's a bit of a you know it's a rainy day now you know very uh, last two days were actually uh, yesterday was shut the city was shut because we were anticipating too much rain and you know the roads have been covered with water and you know you must have seen some videos floating that gurgaon has is under water mm, uh, i wonder how we get there you know what kind of an experientiality it's what my topic is today experiment experiential manifestations get us to a place where all of us as a profession are unable to uh, you know create a be the best possible 
uh, expression for our urban population. There is a there is a there is a gap there that we feel that uh, you know that we see that we are unable to actually give the minimum quality of of life to our uh, urban citizens. I mean, I'm not even reaching the the, the rural citizens. I'm not reaching eighty percent of our population. I'm talking about you know this large urbanities that we are come up with, but we are unable to actually match uh, you know the expectations as well as the basic minimum criteria. The day is nice. It's nice and you know breezy, and uh, it is as long as you're inside the house and the electricity is on, it's good to go. I hope it stays through the through the session, and I can keep connected with you. So my top, my I'm I'm calling my presentation today experiential manifestations, and I'm going to take you through these kind of manifestations that I have engaged with, and I think that all of us in this making of the urban environment must engage with. Uh, uh, and urban the environments, I don't mean environments as projects. I mean environments as things that we experience as human beings. As human beings, we don't just experience projects. We experience life, we experience daily interactions, we experience things. And it is all of those things that kind of uh, populate our own, uh, populate our senses, senses, our approach towards life, our approach towards what we want to build and how we want to build it. So uh, given that a majority of the you know, speaker group today is uh, you know, students, I'm, I'm hoping to say, you know, correlate this with the things that you have been doing or you will be doing in the future uh, in your academics as well as in your future projected practices so that's who i am a bit of uh, you know both which uh, which uh, uh, snigda has talked about overall i graduated in 1997 from uh, shushan school of art and architecture uh, there i did my, my masters and uh, i want to talk about this specifically I did my master's in landscape planning or regional planning in some sense, uh, but through the tool of landscape. Then I did my MPhil in uh, France again on urban theories and housing. Um, I came back to start teaching in 2002 uh, at my alma mater. I came back to start that teaching. I uh, Before that, for three years, before going for my master's, I worked in a urban design firm, very well-known firm, urban design and uh, architecture, Professor Katie Ravindran. If you haven't heard of him, please do, you know, look him up. Uh, a stalwart in, in, you know, in the urban design profession, in our academic profession as well. Uh, somebody who, from whom I was wondering, you know, when I got through his firm, I was wondering, now what next? You know, I've kind of reached a pinnacle right after my BR. Now what next? So it's a difficult path to chart after having reach that point that okay this you know what else can we now do to contribute so you know it this is how i started developing my current phd work is all is also a work which is interdisciplinary multidisciplinary so uh, and i started my firm which was effectively a multidisciplinary practice and i will explain to you my my approach towards that multidisciplinarity but as you see Design thinking, which is a multidisciplinary approach, uh, has been adopted by people from other professions. In fact, architects have sort of left it behind. Uh, it's, you know, business professions and, you know, other uh, IT have kind of picked up design thinking as a tool to create innovation in the built environment, in the environment for all humans, actually. Experientiality and narrative, uh, interdisciplinarity, uh, how other fields connect with architecture, pedagogy a relationship to practice and a very strong amount of work that I do on the role of the architect. Who are we? What are we intended to do for our society? And what are the range of things that we can actually perform? What are the roles that we can perform? So this is this overall broad picture of, you know, where I stand as, as, a, as a, a thinker, I would say, of, of a built environment, as a thinker of space. And I, I wanted to bring this, this gamut. So I haven't just done architecture as buildings. I have done architecture of any kind or, uh, you know, design of any kind, experience as long as it, you know, talks about how people connect, how interdisciplinarities are engaged with, how we can better, you know, human environments. So landscape, urban design, all of this has, has you know, it's the gamut, right? In scale, 
in opportunities uh, and i will go through that again so that's where i am uh, coming from uh, then i have uh, so i started with this you know this is actually the work of one of my um, uh, students uh, much later uh, it was a student who graduated in 2012 uh, somebody who uh, you know went into something like stage craft stage design uh, became a sonographer started working on alternate processes of architectural engagement and this sort of reminded me of something that i started with when i was a child i always wanted to do architecture and i don't have any background in architecture i mean as in you know no past present family uh, is engaged hopefully some future will be has been engaged with architecture uh in a direct sense right so for it was a little out of the left field for all of my you know the family members when i said i want to be an architect and um i was very clear and in fact we were a group of eight uh, you know friends in school and eventually all eight of us for some reason wanted to do something to do with architecture design uh, creation of spaces and we all went into that so this whole you know school gang went into various various uh, different architectural uh, schools i went into shushan my friends went into school of planning and architecture uh, you know sept nid the whole gamut of you know design ex you know education and for me this thing was always clear architecture over anything else and i don't know why i didn't know at that time but it was based on my own past my you know what i had seen as a, as a student what i had seen as a child uh, and i realized that all of us engage with architecture all of us are we live in architecture we have a basic innate sense of the built environment because we engage with it on a daily basis even if we so whether i did architecture or not i was going to be engaging with it for the rest of my life i was very clear and every human being is then you know in that place where they engage every human being this is this is one of the out products of the human civilization which is definite which you know which is definitely a place where all of us are going to have to engage whether we are in the urbanity whether we are in the rurality whether we are in the in between whether we are old young uh, which no matter which gender the engagement with architecture is the is a core of the civilizational process and the core of our future the less we engage with architecture the more disconnected we are going to be with our own physical selves our own bodies our own humanity and we've seen that happen in the online world i mean it, we are happy today to meet across in this you know in this forum but on its own it's not going to be enough i'm going to be talking about physicalities the haptics of things you know what we are i can touch something i can show you something i can remind you of those those you know sensorial aspects and only then you will connect to it but if you were devoid of those sensorial aspects you would not be able to connect to anything that i'm saying so every human being is going to deal with it and we are in this really incredible place where we have the capacity to influence this as as future architects as architects as people who engage are trained to engage with the built environment we have the capacity to influence uh, you know literally how the future of the civilization is going to you know evolve right so th that's where i was i started doing that and the other thing so you know i i i, I heard from you know nilanjan's talk last time that he took you through a story in some sense i'm also trying to take you through that a story of a different kind maybe a story of influences things that mattered to me things that brought me to this place you know and things that made a difference and i think all of us have these little little uh, moments that we can you know grab on to and create ourselves through them so my um, you know in last to 10 my parents told me that you are you go you know become a become a uh, become a doctor and like i said i was 100% clear that i did not want to become anything but an architect and uh, so they said no no you must take up uh, biology because you've got uh, that time we used to have uh, exams uh, out of 50 in class 10 so you've got 50 out of 50 in biology so uh, become a become a doctor i said i have 50 out of 15 every other subject so i can't become a you know sanskrit pandit 
as well as a biologist, as well as a doctor, as well as a zoologist, or, you know, it's not based on how well I can perform in a test. It's based on what I want to do, engage with for the rest of my life. Uh, it, it's, about, it's about the 40, 50 years of my academic, you know, professional career, rather than what I'm good at in terms of writing an exam for. So I, I I still took a biology for two months and I you know and I realized that it was just not something that called out to me and I kept going back to the technical drawing class we used to have this subject instead of biology technical drawing and we kept going back to Potukuchi Papaya Shastri sir who would tell me that no you come here why you come here you come here and I said okay sir after two months do you think I'll be able to make up he says there is nothing that you cannot do. If you set your mind to it and within a week of shifting, I had made up my two months work or worth of work from that, you know, perspective. And I love this, you know, this, what you see over here, I loved seeing things in inside out, outside in understanding what they were. I loved making these drawings. I loved it came so naturally to me. He would just stand there and he would say, oh, when I stand like this, what do I see? And I would know exactly what he was talking about. And I knew. I was literally seeing that body through an x-ray even, you know, trying to see that inside. And that's where my, maybe my biology was helping me understand the, the making of things, right? Uh, the inside out. So uh, he became my, you know, the, my first uh, moment of, you know, connection with this field where I realized that there is, there's so much more to architecture than just shapes, forms, and, you know, it's about engagement it's about people it's about being inside it's about be you know seeing things differently it's about those manifestations those multiple manifestations that we all live through without realizing my next point of contact with this thing that i remember today after 25 30 years is that uh, i so i was in the school while i was even doing technical drawing it was gyan bharti school and um, uh, this is actually where I gave my interview for my BR. For, for, it was belonging to the same group for, uh, you know, the, where the Shushan school was. Uh, and uh, I, I had, of course, given my entry, uh, you know, uh, admission, the interviews and all that for other um, schools in different places. But this is what stuck. This is what struck. And this is what stuck with me. We had a big hall in this building. Now this hall had these massive pillars, and they I realized later were based on this, you know, this uh, the Jain uh, temple concept, and that's why I'm bringing this reference up uh, there, uh, Ranakpur temple in a, you know uh, the Jain uh, temple. Um, it was a large pillared court, and that was our assembly hall. And you know these pillars were big; they were like you know massive. They were about a meter in diameter and while we were having these long assemblies we used to have really sit down assemblies we were having people would you know they would just put uh, daris on the floor and our uh, director would love to speak to us about everything on under the earth and it was about you know two hours sometimes they would go for two hours three hours uh, major sessions of you know understanding the world through his eyes through his experiences and I'm telling you this literally we used to happen every week. We had long sessions. Every day we had these assemblies and we were every day sitting there. But sometimes every week they would go on to these two hour, three hour sessions. We plonked ourselves and everybody was, you know, after some time, students, kids will be kids. We were hiding behind those big pillars. We were using them very effectively. Ki we don't have to say anything. We don't have to be heard. And, uh, you know, so we were always hiding. And we were trying to say, okay, let me not be noticed. But after I was in the school from grade two to grade 12, after 10 years of experiencing this, it stayed with me. The things he talked about, the things that, you know, uh, that I grew up, uh, you know, with, you know, they became anchored in me. And why it's important for me. Uh, I, in the interview, since I was from the school, and in that building, and the building is very well known by a very famous architect again, um, C.P. Kukreja. Uh, and uh, he was also in the interview panel uh, of, uh, you know, and he was engaged with the, you know, architecture school at that time. Uh, my future uh, professor, uh, Dean, Professor M.M. M. Rana was there in the interview at that time. 
I had no clue who these people were. I was just, I had just gone into the principal's office for an interview for my architecture. And so they asked me, so what do you like about this building? And I mean, I was like, okay, I have so many things that I can, what can you say about this building? Not what do you like? What can you say? So there was a there was a moment where I thought that, you know, am I supposed to be positive or am I supposed to really talk about what has been my experience? Am I just supposed to say it's very good or, you know, and at that time, you're just quickly going into it. So I started my whole, you know, talked about those experiences that I lived through, through our, uh, you know, school's director. And like I said, uh, he was uh, Mr. Kapoor those stories of experientiality that he made me live through for 12, 10 years came out in this form. And I said, you know, so there is this, oh, there is this uh, big court and this is, a, it's a very bad place for assemblies. And, you know, there are these things and there are these pillars and I'm like, I was becoming very critical to, you know, the architect who was right in front of me and a stalwart. And I said, there is these pillars and there's so many and this is, you know, create so much blockage and this, that, and, you know, you don't get this and I don't know why it's like this. And I went on. And so they looked at each other and said, do you know what the pillars represent? So I said, yes, they represent those 24 Jayanti Thankaras. It is the sign of the cosmos inside the cosmos. These are things that I didn't know. I was not born to know. I mean, I didn't know. It was because I had heard Mr. Ra Mr. Kapoor talk about them for years that it had ingrained in me that there is a conceptual construct and there is a theoretical construct and then there is a physical construct that comes out of it. So, uh, they, you know, and they, they both looked at each other and said, okay, she's in. And I realized later that I was actually so critical to the architect, but he was looking forward to somebody saying something that added value to his, his work rather than saying, oh, it's all great and I love it and wonderful and all that. And I was being real. I was remembering those, those manifestations of, you know, uh, the kind of opportunities that that space created for all of us. And so this moment of those 24 pillars, it can never leave me. And I, I am I'm connected to the body in that way. I'm connected to how we live, how we cross something, how we pass through something, how we stand behind something and how those are the experience experiences that the human beings are actually dealing with. And it's not the shape and form of things. It's not what it looks like. It's about what it feels like. It's about how we, uh, you know, how, what we remember it to be. I hardly remember the plan of the building. I remember passing through it. I remember being inside it. I remember those, you know, very strong experiential moments. So the, in some sense today, I said 2020 hindsight, I, I realized this is where it came from. So this was one of my second, you know, I mean, another reference that I wanted to give. So I went on to making these sciographic, I'm sure all of us have made, started making my drawings and working with that approach. And, you know, this is a first year work. I was so kicked to be in architecture. I was so happy to do what I was doing. I was so, this was so innate to me. Every line that I drew had meaning, even if it was about psychography. It talked about, you know, a person uh, standing in shade, for example. It talked about people hiding behind something. It talked about people trying to be more visible, less visible. Even a psychography sheet mattered to me in that sense. It was not just an exercise. Uh, a building construction sheet at the same time mattered to me. My building construction student work, I'm showing you, this is, I think, semester six. Uh, that mattered to me equally. Um, I was completely engrossed in the making of buildings. Why it was to be the way it was? How did it get to be the way it was? Where, what could we do to in increase in the way we detailed those experiential components? How did we get to those massive pillars, you know? And could we do something to the pillars to to add experientiality similarly you know facades building edges i started actually expanding this approach this 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 orientation towards architecture through all my subjects and i think all the subjects that we teach have so much strength uh, as long as we stop looking at them like you know uh, outcomes they are not outcomes they are contributors to another larger story let's understand that so I'm showing you some of my housing work now. This was my, and at that time, no computers, all hand-drawn, everything, no nothing, everything. So 
in my housing semester i was told that um, you had to you know and i'm sure you will also be told and you have been told that there has to be a typology of you know a particular typology that you have to follow it has to be you know you can't do anything and everything two bedroom three bedroom those kind of associations with the typology of the of you know with the built environment in you know housing and our project was a little different uh, this was a part of a larger master plan and the master plan had to be something that we came up with ourselves as a group of eight students and we applied our own master planning uh, principles and strategies we made that and then we divided these plots into based on the master plan into into different plots and our individual response was to enhance those properties of the master plan so um, i had this i had a plot which was low rise i had to do a low rise housing in that g plus 3 g you know g plus 3 g plus 4 uh, nothing higher than that i was working and i just started looking at each of these moments as opportunities so eventually here you see that there is a sort of standardization that's there in the build form but i started looking at it more in terms of how each of these things as a contextual entity can support the one next to it can support the one next to it and then as a result be different uh, and and i got these commentaries that nay it cannot be the it cannot be different you have to apply standardization it has to be the same you have to know how to work it so i started with some of our, i i started with about 50 types of houses in this i ended and i fought my battles and i said no it cannot be we cannot standardize human experience to this extent we have to bring it to a common ground i understand i ended up with about 10 options and, and, and you know i didn't say no i will not do three i will not do four i will not do the standard there has to be some so this is a rationalization process that i think we all go through in various ways where we are balancing what we think is good for the environment versus what is actually good for the environment and you have you know there are other properties other rationalizations that come in so this was my housing and you know went i went into this went into drawing and i through this i started questioning um this approach of standardization uh, of of uh, you know standardization of experiences uh, no matter where you stand in certain parts of our city today in certain housing doesn't matter you literally forget where you are it it is the same you you, you know there is a there is a i don't know a bottom lining that we keep doing like a flat line and should we do it should we not do it should we should we be the creators of uh, multiplicity or should we be the creators of individualities or should we be the creators of social opportunities uh, these are questions that we all must ask ourselves that led me to this my other moment of you know um some sort of approach in you know building up my approach architecture is about common sense i referred to this uh, as when i looked at my earlier work right when i said okay i am being asked to standardize i'm being asked to do things but how do these processes of standardization actually take place in nature is the process of standardization a part of a of a natural setup and from there i came to this um my friend philosopher guide a uh, professor who's got nothing to do with architecture gave me a moment of this you know um you know it's an epiphany when she looked at this mass housing complex in the south of delhi which is a government housing complex called rk pura when she looked at it one day and she said this is the slum of how urban housing and i was wondering where is how can you convert a slum which is we understand as you know places where you have less infrastructure less opportunities less availability of resources uh, you know are actually those places of common uh, you know of um, can how you know similar to those places of nicely groomed manicured lands flat open yes and how can these two things be called slums at the same time and i went into her mind and i tried to understand from her what she meant she 
essentially meant the absence of this individuality, the absence of the multiplicities of urban living, of people, of people's approach to life that these large scale housings post independence had ended up creating for our country right they were offering they were answering a need of fast housing government housing but they were also also eliminating what was so crucial to that land uh, what was so important to that land and i started looking at how animals then build and i was wondering where is this you know where is this social approach of animals uh, and this anti-social approach of the human social space, uh, how do these kind of come across match? And uh, what are we actually doing? What are we actually teaching? So I realized that a lot of our learning is a learning where we curb our instinct, where we curb our common sense. And if we stop doing that, we are going to be able to give more opportunities to ourselves, to the built environment. So I look at this, I look at this, you know, these are some images of R.K. Puram and it is kilometers and kilometers and kilometers of this. So I asked, where did we go wrong? And it's the same. Then I came across these, you know, very beautiful uh, monuments which were interspersed inside these slums. They were belonging to centuries, you know, past, right? So this whole pre-Mughal settlement that took place in Delhi actually had its core in some of these areas and we had these beauties but we we ended up with this uh, and I'm wondering how did we reach this point where all the specificities of the land all its natural forms relationships have been ignored by us to make something standardized and you know flat and that's what she was talking to, to to me about slum, right? So the slum was, I think, yeah. So you know, this this standardization, everything is the same, is is an you know idea of the slum that she was talking about. So I went into this, you know. So my dissertation, I started exploring, what are these? What value do they hold for us? What do they mean to us today? Why? So architecture in then became a story of the past for me. When I started digging out, uh, you know, what is this that we keep with us? What is it that we choose to keep with us? What is it that we choose to ignore? What is it that we choose to, as people, to take forward? And I started working on an approach towards understanding what could be the development of the future about it. So what was the future? How did we reach? How will we become? Uh, you know, maintain our specificities, our individualities, and not just do things that are, you know, understood as common best practices. This takes me again, I'm, I'm bringing back over here, this approach towards belonging, that we, this, there is an idea of belonging that we need to create in our spaces. It needs to belong to the people who we are creating it for. It needs to belong to us as creators of the space. So this was work that I did under Katie Ravindran, like I said, uh, 97 onwards, I was in his office, I interned in his office, and then I went on to work in his office for three years. And this was the Arya Vaidya Shala uh, uh, hospital uh, for ABS Kerala that were that was coming up in. And here, you know, a lot of breakaways from that process of standardization. So Katie made me work on nothing else but his 50, the 52 toilets in this building and he said there are 52 toilets and I he said you have to design all of them as a starting architect you have to do it and you will do it but there's so much learning in that 52 uh, toilets and I opened and he made me for some reason just decided that I was the um, the CAD champion of the CAD had just come in we just started using it more effectively in our in our work so he said, oh, it's, you will work on CAD, you will become the CAD uh, person and you will do these 52 toilets. So I started working weeks and months of 52 toilets and I realized not a single toilet is the same as the next one. There is no standardization in his process. And that's where I realized that there is a you know misconception towards standardization that we are all you know carrying. And the project is a successful project. People deal with it. It is responsive. It is contextual. It responds to people. It creates belonging. But it's every aspect of it is to be designed, 
to be catered to to un be understood only as much as is needed and on not more than what is needed but all that is needed uh, that uh, we don't design less we don't design more we design as much as is needed we design and the more we design the less we use is a concept that i understood through him the less we use the less resources we use the higher the design uh, uh, intent and the higher the design integration into everything that we do, the lesser we re use resources. A in some sense, a, a, a sort of anti-modularity, but a very contextual modularity, uh, I would say. That came to me through uh, working with Katie's office and doing 52 toilets. And eventually, he would come day one once, he'll tell me, Amrita, let's do it in, let's do the tile at 150 by 150. So here I was changing everything from 200 tile by 200 size of tile to 150 by 150 because we had realized something. Next day it would become 300. The next day it would become 200 back. And I would be going through the 52 toilets trying to change everything and making sense of everything. Um, only years later, I heard Katie in a talk and I was, you know, it was very upsetting to keep doing it. And I was wondering why this was the approach. Uh, only years later, when I heard him in that talk, I realized that there is a deep sense of even choosing the tile size, how it came to that, how he made that decision, how it communicated a particular you know, idea, a particular approach, how it catered to the ecological balance, how it created, you know, connected to the idea of sustainability. There was an approach, it was a broader picture that he was showing us which we in our little you know worlds of I mean my 52 toilet world was very upset about changing every two days but there was a bigger idea that I did come up with that I did understand eventually so I think I'm going too slow I'm going to speed up now so architecture to me is about how humans perceive that world. And like I said, I went back to doing my work in my BR into uh, my master's thesis, my landscape thesis, where I, uh, this was in France, where I started looking at this idea of memory and how we remember things and how no matter which part of the world we are, there are certain attributes to memory that is common to all human beings and uh, perception, which is common to all human beings and that we must bring into all the work that we do at that point i'm also bringing in my uh, work with my firm i came back and i started my firm with my childhood best friend who is not an architect who is a designer and you know a, a thinker of uh, in terms of uh, design per se and uh, studied from nift uh, also a, a, a fellow you know teacher uh, and he taught me something important that design is in everything it, it, that, that, that is all over that no matter what we do no matter what position we take Rudraji taught me this thing and in our firm hence we came up to this perspective that we were going to be people who dealt with design so it doesn't matter at which scale it doesn't matter in which way but design as a way of uh, you know intensifying people's relationships to their surroundings design as a way to create alternate experientialities was something that we had gone into as a practice. Um, and with that also, I mean, so I'm showing you the different scales of work. This is one, you know, one anklet that we were equally interested in designing uh, to uh, the Dharavi slums where we talked about where we won an international project uh, to work on uh, you know people and their experiences inside these slums uh, uh, the Dharavi slums in Bombay are uh, renowned uh, for uh, the opportunities that they provide all of us in the city uh, and we, we, we're talking about people here so architecture was less about things less about objects more about people more about influencing space spatialities more about uh, creating those experiential manifestations and and so I'm showing you the range of the work that we've done in our firm this 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 work was a particular work uh, where uh, my uh, my 
BR uh, in BR Professor Rana, who was a Padma Shri Award uh, winning uh, architect, uh, had worked with the government for a long time with the Nehru government. He was the chief architect of CPWD in his, uh, you know, first, uh, you know, in his before he retired, and then he, you know, created our school. This was one of his buildings in the Teen Murti Bhavan, Nehru Memorial Museum and Library. And it's about, you know, in 2009 that I got this opportunity to actually work on his building. technologies, newer interventions. Um, a lot of our work today in architecture is about understanding what can we do to create a sustenance in what we already have? Uh, the world, this, the, uh, the world is not going to be. It's not going to be full of greenfield projects. Uh, we are essentially going to be working in spaces which are already there. We are going to have to that. And, and you look at Dharavi on one side, and you look at uh, you know the Lachins Delhi high fly, you know high uh, activity zone with diplomatic zone. A uh, well, lot of uh, well-known, uh, you know, I mean, uh, diplomats, all the embassies around. And, you, have, and you, you look at these two ends where there is, you know, where there is uh, different kind of values that offer. And you realize that it's not about building new. It's about making it within that, within what you already have. So as architects, we must understand, uh, we must kind of hold ourselves away from the creative complex that we have, the creator's complex, I would say, the creator's complex is I am the end all and be all of the space. I will decide what it needs to be uh, and go down into the ground as to how people will live it, how people will feel it. And we have to become uh, essentially the people who serve the creation of experiences, the creation of, of experiences for people, right? So I'm not saying serve people i'm saying serve in the creation of experiences and that's where we hold our you know position today uh, so for me it was a make it or break it moment when we actually started working on my mentor's work and i was like okay this i really need to understand from inside out i need to understand why he took this step so a lot of um, you will see minimum interventions to in increase the uh, you know to bring out maximum impact so uh, the other side, I went into, I'm going to go into a bit into my ex, uh, academic experiences, like how I teach, what I teach, why I teach it. Uh, this is some outcomes of my students. And uh, the third uh, thing that I will talk to you about is my experiential uh, cross-disciplinary part of my practice, where I will talk about this range of possibilities that we have, that we've been able to do at my firm. Uh, with this perspective that even as as practicing architects we are interested we there is a manifesto of design education that we are engaged with and i think if you look at all big architectural and design uh, schools and schools of thought all of them have come out of practice uh, but and all of them whether it is, you know, Doshi's work, whether it is, uh, you know, all the big schools that have come up are actually practitioners who, who believe in, in uh, knowledge generation and work with, uh, you know, work in academics while they're working in practice. And, and it is the synergy between the practice and education that is very important for all of us to deal, engage with. If we want to become those leaders of, of uh, design thinking, and design integration in our society. So uh, we move away from the iconic to experiential. We talk about uh, working in uh, participation with participation. We talk about integration of, uh, of practice in academia. We talk about all kinds of scales of that integration. As a firm, we were involved in building up a curriculum. We were involved in writing um, uh, new uh, courses. Uh, we were involved in uh, simply in teaching. Uh, we were we we made it a manifesto for ourselves that we will not be doing one without the other. So every, at some point, everybody in our firm is actually given a day off to either upgrade their 
their uh, knowledge set or themselves participate in in an educational workshop or themselves conduct classes do all of that so it was an integrated environment that we were always looking for so multidisciplinarity in that sense it means much more for us than a simple uh, you know saying a simple word which says that let's link one thing to the other so um, um, we started off by thinking which is our what as our world uh, in some sense architecture is about who you are and what you want to be in the world and what you want the world to be so this was our uh, studio uh, a collage of possibilities is how we defined our studio uh, where we took in every aspect of design every aspect of uh, uh, you know spatial uh, you know uh, opportunities that we could get of design opportunities this space our studio became our our uh, you know the storyteller for us for who we were and uh, as designers so we were doing graphics we were doing um, jewelry design we were doing book design we were doing illustrations we were doing work for the UNDP we were doing work for large scale design practices we were doing uh, design management for the un for universities we were doing retrofitting very a lot of retrofitting we were creating uh, experiences and i think it was evident in our space we were creating experiences for ourselves so this uh, you know our own space became our our uh, our calling card i would say more than anything else some of the work that we've done in exhibition so a lot a lot of work that we did in exhibition uh, has been around uh, this the largest build, uh, b2b show uh, in bombay uh, for the jewelry industry about 5 lakh square feet of uh, exhibition space that we were the chief designers for for about uh, 14 years in a row uh, and we started really looking at experiential spaces in that sense of ephemeral experientiality experientiality that stays in our mind more as a memory rather and also as you know those five days it's a five day long exhibition but it's something that we have to remember uh, that each and every human being will remember once they have passed through it uh, things that are made with very very um, modest materials i would say materials that we were looking at in terms of getting uh, you know even working on how they will be recycled we were getting in recycled materials we were creating uh, you know ephemeral architecture that would be that's very transient that will last for a very short while but then which goes back into the cycle of of uh, you know of uh, the the zero carbon cycle in or whatever i mean kind of understanding sustainability through this or approaching sustainability through that so um, how do we go about that uh, some moments i'm just sharing with you architecture in that sense became a lot about detailing the more you detail the less the less you will uh, you know waste uh, the more you detail the less you will uh, consume uh, and architecture then also became about wrangling space we were also doing these small you know two bedroom apartments that started looking like they were much bigger than they are uh you know and trying to understand uh you know how people lived inside those spaces like i said a lot of it about was communication a lot of our work was on communication of architecture how could we communicate graphics we were telling stories we we went into signages we went into understanding uh how how information is processed by human beings uh we also won a few competitions while in that process we won this national competition for international actually for agra where we were becoming the where we had uh, uh talked about how can agra remain uh, you know in people's minds less uh, you know more all the aspects of agra so it was an international competition um going back to some of the experiential work we were talking about thinking inside out i said you know how do i start thinking inside out so some conceptualities about how do you actually be inside a space and how do people remember those spaces uh what is the inside of things so since it was a jewelry industry exhibition again we were talking about uh the 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 diamond as an entity as a carbon uh you know the cube of carbon we are trying to understand 
and expressing it to the world what the diamond is actually about and kind of creating these large scale environments. Uh, design then also became this thinking outside the box, how we started looking at parametric processes, how to create, uh, you know, alternate uh, environments within environments. Uh, using uh, this was one form of it and this was again this was with threads we were using different forms simple materials modest materials materials that could be recast very easily uh, and uh, kind of creating extraordinary environments of this kind I, I look at this work which is through uh, you know which is through single straight lines and I, I I'm reminded of uh, you know some famous uh, architectural outcomes uh, but it's essentially work in simplicity, which is then understood because it's experienced in its complexity, how these layers of simplicity get added on to create uh, unique environments for all of us. So all straight lines, uh, in fact, but the outcome is not at all in a straight line form, though everything is straight line, easy to build, fast to build, fast to deconstruct, less loss, less uh, materials, but uh, more impact. So we started looking at this approach. Um, like I said, it's about the sort of staging of performances for human performances, human emotions. Um, another outcome of that, this is just uh, some simple thread that is combined with MS to create a story of how you know people perceive our daily lives and you know and how then people start occupying this space of the inside and the outside this interconnection and like I you know also about common people this was again about our Dharavi work where we got uh, you know an international competition we our team won the you know the third prize in that this takes me to my um, uh, Snigda you must tell me whenever you want me to stop right because I will keep going on oh um, no no ma'am just go. And if it is getting boring, please tell me, yeah, because uh, it is difficult to to perceive anything from people, uh, right? Uh, sir has Sunil Kumar. Sir has his uh, camera on, and I'm really glad because at least I'm seeing some expressions and relating to it, right? <laughs> no, ma'am, so, like, very intense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, actually, uh, ma'am, this is Shamant here, associate yeah. professor. Yeah. We have a problem of power failure. So, yeah. and I have a less data. I'm on mobile hotspot. So, either I can switch off my video and hear you, if both is there, then I can't hear you properly. I, so I totally appreciate I totally <laughs> appreciate. Thank you for that. But it's just that, you know, I'm feeling that, okay, maybe it's getting a bit too much and I need to stop yeah. because as a teacher, no one can just continue, right? I mean, one doesn't yeah. know when to stop. So, I need some indication from you, is all. Should, should, am I good to go? Am no, I good I, to I, go, or yeah. I think? Do you think no, I? No, 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 ma'am. We we still have time. We still have. Yeah. Time. Okay. Please. please. And I, and I hope it's making some sort of sense because uh, you know, wo bhi nahi, whatever you tell me. Yeah. No, very much, very much. We are we are following you continuously. I can repeat also whatever the key terms. Ma'am, it is a very intense, very yeah. intense uh, experience. So I'm um, actually. Uh, moving forward to look in detail <laughs> those presentations also those sheets also uh -huh. yeah. okay I'm not, I don't think I have uh, you know yeah sure. I have and all of those can yes, so there is one I'll move on yeah yes. sorry you were saying yes, one yes. Glitch, madam actually students can't speak directly in between actually uh -huh. they are allowed so they will be <laughs> chatting or putting their questions Snigna is coordinating if required she will they will disturb you don't worry but absolutely your, i would love to be disturbed is, yes madam presentation is very you know clear and uh, uh, crisp if students are relating to the drawings what you have done way back in 90s <laughs> manual drawings they are fantastic so I am also a faculty colleague to um, architect Kanaka. So it is very good, madam. Please continue. If Thank required, you. we we will take the liber uh, you know liberty to stop. Please do, please do. The more yeah. we talk, the better it is going to be for all Thank of us. Thank you, madam. Please continue, madam. Yeah. Please. So uh, I will take you now to act some of my work as a, as an academic that I have been doing, and of course this is not my work. This is my students' work a lot of it, some of it is also Snigda's batch and Snigda's, maybe her direct work is not here, 
but uh, there is uh, so how do i translate this into what i teach and uh, how i teach and i think how is the future of that you know the architectural expression going to be through that so i've been taking masters um, studios uh, in uh, interior architecture where we are talking about how these moments are lived how how spaces are lived how people occupy spaces and how they result in a very very strong uh, urban uh, you know uh, response from all of us how these actually these responses are inculcated in our daily lives even if we don't see it and we don't engage with it but even something like the cinematic experience studio uh, taught us that uh, there is so much in cinema in in anything that we are doing around us which is a creative expression that absorbs space that inculcates space and that uh, responds to space uh, and it's it's about it's about all of these experiences together so how does a visual medium of that kind relate to experientiality a lot of the times you know students or people don't get to travel they get to travel probably through their cinematic experiences so there is a very strong connection between spatial memory spatial attributes uh, and uh, how it's projected how it's communicated uh, to how it's actually made uh, and uh, uh, us as architects should not actually think of just that built environment as something that is static but something that's going to be create you know participant in the future in the creation of these future experiences through different media how do we how do we bring those layers of experiences into our work today uh, it has been one of the critical components of how i uh, teach uh, and uh, and what we should teach this is very interesting again i think this was one of the works that snigdha's batch particularly did uh, where we were talking about how urbanity is uh, again experienced how particular spaces can be um, can uh, you know particular urban spaces can be create can can give us life experiences that will uh, you know that help us engage with the immediacy of our city better so we're talking about daily experiences we're talking about people we're talking about how a person even crosses the road we're talking about what is that experience of somebody who stops on a on a sidewalk to buy food uh, from a uh, from a vendor we're talking about how does that what is what is the experience of the inner and the outer realms of the world of the city that people experience how sharp are those divides or how how nuanced are those divides between the thresholds of ins and outs what is the nature of the ins and out and i i can take this expression from all the way from like i said the in that i was talking about earlier through my work of being inside a diamond versus the in, in you know throw to the larger urban interiorities that we start creating uh, each one of them is about how we live how we experience and how we uh remember the space in the future i think that common thread has remained this is some work of the second year students of br who are talking about how architecture spaces for the living how how this sort of relationship takes place how people engage live with space or uh, and and create environments so this is actually at the br second year level the earlier one was mr second first year level and uh we we teach them uh, simple tools to create to enhance to uh, you know occupy a large part of their own experientialities that they are creating and experience, create space not through like i said plan sections and elevations but create space through experientialities uh, this work is then transferred into those plans which we can then use as architects to uh, get the built form constructed but uh, how we live spaces is how you actually need to start looking at designing spaces so uh, one large part of that work is about you know looking at things from all vantage points seeing it from all possibilities from inside outside up down inside out bottom up uh, and top uh, upside down uh, top down uh, all relationships with architecture with its creation as architects we are able to actually do all of this we should be able to do all of this we should be 
will merge uh, it to be the way it is and to how it is going to actually be to what makes it possible to have that in existence uh, in, in its various other aspects of rationality or logistics that come and go into making it so construction as well as cost as well as other attributes that come into uh, you know in, into sync with this way of thinking inside out um, some other work again second year third year work where we're living uh how how does that take place um talking about a very strong approach that i want to talk about over here is when we are as students start designing or when we as an architect we start designing we come up with the We say, okay, this is my concept. Let's hope for concepts which are essentially superimposed ideas, but they are about things that come out of the ground, which are ideas built from the ground. And one of the good, good important points of building something ground up is about not leaving anything behind. Don't leave the people behind. Don't leave any thought behind. Don't leave an idea behind. Don't choose one over the other too fast, right? Uh, to be a better, uh, you know, um, you know, creator of space or thinker for space. Uh, what if you came up with an approach that okay, I have this and I have this. They are opposite, maybe. But what if I can actually look at both of them? I can combine uh, and come up with a deeper, uh, more meaningful outcome. Uh, always be in that mode of collecting ideas. Uh, collect more than discard. Uh, don't choose one over the other is something that I think I would like to leave all students with and you know even even us architects with don't don't choose too fast too early in your processes if you do have to make choices they should come at the end of closer towards the end side of your process where you have actually gone through the process of accumulating accumulating we see a lot of situations where students want to um say okay i did this and the faculty gives them a crit you know this 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 something is not working out and what the student does generally we come up with this place what the student does goes back and says okay i'm doing something completely different uh all of us go through that and i think we should stop when we reach that point where we say i'll do something different that means all of that that you already had has been put aside and on you know something else which is not going to be an epiphany it's not going to be an epiphany that's not going to be God descending and saying, you know, Tathastu, as I say. Uh, it's going to be a mo moment where you're going to have to collect. I did this. This is why I did it. This is how I went about it. This is why it may not work. This is why it works. This is what could work with it. This is how it applies. This, this sort of process of thinking through your approach is a much more viable process for you to be able to do much more uh, you know, uh, integrated human outcomes rather than imposed formal form-based outcomes, which we do see happening. Uh, those always will be impositions, whereas these always will be grounds up and in sync with what we understand, uh, what we have lived through, uh, you know, how we remember our spaces. So to be able to be true to that experience, you have to be able to be in this mode of not leaving anything behind. Um, and I'm just showing you some examples. We also did it, this in the online mode. We were able to talk about experiences. This was some of the presentations by uh, were students in uh, 2021 who had completely learned on online. So uh, we all, there are tools. Don't let a different tool hold you back from inhabiting and projecting yourself into space that you are building. Uh, don't Don't let any such blockade come in your way because there are ways to move about it and our first uh, understanding of space is experiential and our creation of that space has to be experiential hence uh, so some of the work how do you communicate part of it is what do you make part is also how do you communicate it part of it is how do you actually project yourself live inside it Uh, one important section behind sections is where life happens. 
uh, use sections more actively to, to create these environments, to be creative tools, not just uh, tools of uh, outcome tools of your work. Think through sections. And then just my last part where I'm talking, I'll just glean over this, uh, um, Signa, if you don't mind, because it's long. But we have, um, I really talked about as a practitioner, as an academician, as a person who thinks space, as a person who is thinking built environments, our work as individual work does not end at these two broad, you know, um, categories of academics and, uh, you know, profession. Um, in fact, it should be something that's linked into you in every way that you do everything that you do. Um, and so these are various explorations that I did over the past years. I think Snigda mentioned uh, uh, mud futures in in which I brought in all of these uh, connections with the with the global network global uh, uh, engagement across uh, you know various continents all continents uh, thirty plus forty plus countries coming into talking about all these aspects research comes into play pedagogy comes into play community relationships come into play networks come into play and this was a long multi host uh, multi location conclave that we did. Uh, from you can see the kind of people that we tapped across the world brought in a whole lot of knowledge resource community knowledge resource not just in architecture uh, but not just architectural institutions or practitioners but also people's organizations ground up approaches uh, research intensive approaches so we essentially connected the world for this particular uh, idea called mud future of mud in architecture and this is some of the responsibilities that i think all of us as students architects uh, you know future professionals hold uh, how do we take part in this this uh, in such experiences how do we kind of develop such experiences so that the the um, the field of architecture the discipline of architecture begins to mean all that it can right and all the layers that it can have so uh, this is just something that we do which will develop our, uh, you know, the as a as a social endeavor for our society, for for all of us together. It will also affect our uh, profession. It will also affect on what we do. So here in this conclave, we we started with this, you know, nine year month uh, long exploration of various ideas of indigenous knowledge of. How do you scale up something? How do you talk about buildings, uh, large buildings? How do you integrate technology into it? How do you, what, what is the future of our urbanity? Uh, where do we come from and where do we go? How do we kind of create this through this lens of this one material? We went through it. If you want, you can, uh, you know, refer, to, you can listen to these sessions. They're very informative. Um, Snigda can share the details uh, with the, with your students. Um, and um, even uh, colleagues, faculty colleagues, I would love for them to actually go into it. We've talked about how things are made. Some things, my, my presentation seems to be stuck and not moving ahead. Oops. I think I might have to restart. Okay, there it goes. Okay, so uh, this is how we connected across the globe. We talked we talked about all uh, you know various kinds of people we are talking about people who are doing various things we've got in university academics we've got in uh, various uh, ideas of popular culture value systems sustainable thinking skills and knowledge uh, and we kind of we became the literally the sutradhar the the thread bearers of this of this endeavor we, we have now become a repository where we are uh, propagating uh, sustainable, relevant, uh, local, locally driven, uh, knowledge driven resource, research, high end research, but that's driven from the local resources with the help of all of these global organizations. And I think this is a part of our growth that we all need to have as, as individuals. And I would really, you know, suggest to the students here, be a part of as many of these engagements as possible. Don't just be looking at, um, you know, your academics in that straight line that uh, that I go to class and I come away from class. The more you engage with wider uh, knowledge sets, the better it is going to be for you to, 
to situate yourselves as uh, ethical and uh, you know uh, ethical beings in our uh, you know this endeavor to make our communities and our society better uh, it's very important our i think our ethics as as architects really matter uh, we need really to understand who we are what we want to be as individuals what is the kind of architecture we want to propagate what is the world that we want to live in and be a part of creating so this is just to tell you this you know network was huge you can tap into it uh if you if you connect to this uh, particular organization um then the other thing that i do in my academics is also looking at things uh, uh you know inside out differently developing new approaches of uh, things which are less as they sh they have been over the years but more in terms of how the future generation is going to make impacts so when you start looking at your projects you should start looking at your projects more you know more in terms of the kind of impact that they are going to create rather than how aesthetically suitable they are uh, aesthetics is definitely a huge part because that's what creates uh, experientiality but experientiality is also about how it impacts societies how it impacts people how it impacts human beings so when you start doing your next project you must talk about it in terms of its impact you must talk about it in terms of how what kind of value generation it's going to do you must talk about it as a uh, as uh, you know what are the existing systems of the build form that it can use and like i said knowledge accumulation through value based learning system based learning and impact based learning this is where we all need to be you know really questioning some of our work has been actually uh, applauded uh, i find this a very interesting testimonial from colleague who is uh, from um, a phd candidate at uh, adelaide university from bangladesh to begin she say hope and beyond follow similar paths to stimulatingly engage change makers of the society this is how we what we want our architecture we can all do but what kind of architecture is all our individual thing of the testimonial who said who's looking at in studio all the adaptive habitats in biometric uh, situations how does this sort of knowledge of something which is uh, technologically driven influence spatial formation um, we really look at how this will make the future of architecture and the architect in our country um, so a lot of our decisions are based on uh, what we do through this lens um, i'm i think just taking you through as an academic also look at all of this i'm leaving very important for disagreements one of the very important thing we all must agree this, the the idea of collision uh, and honest disagreement is often a good sign of progress uh, and uh, of our future together so uh, let's make those Uh, platforms where actually look at uh, you know we can agree to disagree honestly move ahead if we all follow the same path we all to be doing same thing and it's not going to help us move ahead uh, let's you know various such things where all of these entities can coexist but it creates healthy conversations between all of us don't be scared to question don't be scared to ask questions don't be worried about asking the wrong question uh, any question is the right question because it is if it's come if it comes from this position of an honest disagreement and uh, it is the only way ahead for architecture rather than talking about everything 
you know, repeating, uh, I mean, same thing repeating for the next 50 years. It is our responsibility to create all these moments of, uh, you know, of progress, which will come through our in turn, in, in you know, innate uh, uh, belief of, you know, innate beliefs, which allow us to question all the things that happen around us. I'll stop here. Thank you, Snigda. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you, ma'am. Uh, yes. I will allow first uh, director, sir, to speak. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it, it was very intense, uh, madam. Like, um, and um, definitely <clears throat> uh, your academical background and your work in teaching. Uh, so that made this. Uh, presentation so intense <laughs> and um, in fact i learned many things i learned many things from this and mm -hmm. usually you know the uh, examples that you have quoted uh, while uh, uh, talking about design pedagogy so many times we also uh, relate those examples uh, the way uh, that you have picked up and uh, it was very revealing uh, the whole the amount of energy that you are putting into understanding design so that you teach design better that that's uh, that is um, very great actually yeah thank you very much for this presentation <laughs> yeah uh, good afternoon ma'am thank you so much i, I, I uh, yeah. I, yeah there's hello am i, I audible Yes, yeah, someone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are well, there was some network issue, but you are. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Now, actually, I was uh, going to your presentation. One thing. Sorry, which... I seem to not be hearing anything. Uh, can you hear me, ma'am? Now. Now I can. Yeah. yeah. So I was uh, religiously going through your uh, presentation. What one thing which was uh, uh, in my mind is like, how do you manage so many things uh, at one point of time is the first question what I have. Uh, because uh, you have so many engagements with uh, and collaborations with various uh, parts of uh, design thinking. You sometimes teach, you sometimes do exhibitions and all these are like, on spontaneous activities, which doesn't give you much time to perform, love to think much because like those are all time bound, uh, time bound uh, designing and uh, various activities. It's really surprising how do you manage all these things is first part of the question. Second is like when you are so diversified uh, in, in these streams, right? Uh, where you are talking about experiential. Uh, sir, I'm sorry, yeah. I will have to interrupt. But I think. Uh, um, she, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think okay. the actually, uh, connection yeah, it, it is actually troubling for the last two, three minutes. Mm. Yeah, yeah, she's joining back. Yeah. She's joining back. Sorry, I got disconnected. Yes, uh, I, I, I didn't hear anything that uh, uh, you oh, said. Yeah, <laughs> so I had typed it because I also had network connections. So I just post that. Like uh, when you started your presentation, we had a power failure. But by the time you had finished it, I just got the power. It's like the GAN what we got, it got enlightened. <laughs> <laughs> so all these days, what, what I used to think is like whatever I'm doing is like too much of your work. But looking at you, your energy levels and being engaged <laughs> in so much of diversified uh, streams of design but, touching really motivates me. Uh, and all those are time bound, time bound exercises. Like where they don't, where a client doesn't give much of a time, right? And you have such an intense uh, thinking process which needs time. How do you act so quick? Is first part of the question. From where do you get this amount of energy? How do you manage your time? Because managing a daily course and delivering a lecture of uh, three hours or four hours a day itself is a great job. Then you have to practice. Then you have to engage. I'm sure you'll be meeting at least 20 to 30 people <laughs> per day, right? At least if you count them for three minutes per day also, it takes a lot of time, right? 
that is first part of the question and second part is like how do you manage to when you have such an intense design thinking process when a client approaches you how do you sensitize him and how do you get the payment part of it <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i i like your questions because it's a, it's a it's definitely a struggle um uh, as far as the first question is concerned i think um i don't have any boundaries between life work play <laughs> i am so passionate about what i'm doing that it it never ends in some sense it never goes away it's all a part and i think one of the things that i do is also when i teach i'm talking about this that i, I it's not a 9 to you know 3 studio studios 9 to 1 so that's when you thinking studio it, it's a part of everything that we do and that engagement is a constant engagement yeah huh? so it comes and goes of course it has its moments of you know energy depletion and then you have things like coffee that help you get through uh, <laughs> right and but but then but then you know students also in some sense your colleagues who stand students who become your colleagues working with you it's it's a building of an ecosystem i think that uh, you know that it's it's sort of building your your team more than just you right if you are just you it's a it's a mammoth task but if it's your whole ecosystem that kind of engages with you in this way and you kind of built it around you it allows you to uh, achieve you know more of these layers so um, uh, i we spend a lot of time doing those th- exercises most of the time i tell my you know i'm telling my uh, uh, business partner who's also who's a childhood friend actually we have mammoth fights about things because we we disagree quite a lot happily uh, but, but we keep i keep telling him that you know that uh i doesn't matter i don't want to just design i want to actually create a a moment where we can all uh, you know experience what we are doing together uh, so there's series of these moments design outcome happens right but of course like you said um it's time bound one of the work and most of the work we do is highly time bound we don't have the flexibility like an architectural project might have a a traditional architectural project that might have that oh today the drawings didn't go or tomorrow we will submit or you know it, you know there are time very extreme time bounds and sometimes if the uh, one of the exhibitions was going to start at 10 o'clock in the morning at 9 o'clock we were the ones nailing things in the in the end because you know all of us were there were 10000 workers on on ground but we were also within them nailing things to the last minute saying okay 9 o'clock uh, you know this thing starts so uh, it's a it's a skill to learn i think time boundedness is something that we all learn uh, only when we are hit with it right okay. it's it's not something that is ingrained and it has been a struggle 100% struggle to even understand to kind of you know this is the moment of churning of ideas or this is the moment of production of sheets and i didn't show you some of the work, sheets that were produced to to be able to do that because they are deta- like i said detailed to that extent where the outcomes are not questioned on site one of the ways to do this to do this high end work is to actually be able to spend more time detailing design more build less design more build less design more uh, waste less these are these are some uh, you know processes that we all need to build in uh, the more we create so i have arguments with clients in fact uh, most of the time i am like fighting with clients when i am telling them that no i am not going to start the site on this day because i need certain kind of lag time for this thing to take place if i am better off right now if i build uh, you know if i work more right now i'm going to be able to give you a more economic and a more effective outcome later um it's about efficiencies so you have to explain it to them and a lot of our work is actually um i would say we have to we have to educate the client uh, we have to we have to spend a lot of time making them see uh, you know and making them believe uh, I, the belief is very important the why of it why is something important not the what so we generally don't present the what i'm doing this we present the why Uh, and that that sort of creates a very different outcome in the minds of the clients i think my second part of the question 
which is what which i thought i answered the second part how oh, you are talking about uh, how i convince clients right it's about sensitizing clients yes i do agree but how do you get your uh, how do you get your money payment back <laughs> oh we do i mean of course <laughs> it's the same process that we all go through uh, we all go through so for example if it, it is a you know it's a project which is not meant to last longer i think that exercise of brand building if you keep doing with them the project doesn't stop just because its physicality stops so you have to you have we these clients that we had i talked about uh, the india international jewelry show which has been 14 years i did that uh, we did that so we could actually uh, you know keep they they kept coming back to us uh because we worked on uh, we were not just working on one episode for them we were actually working on how to build their brand how to make them how to you know generate value more than the architectural outcome or the spatial outcome so i think uh, we sell it to the clients in that way which is the right thing it's not just selling i think that uh, understanding the uh, the brand aspect that uh, the clients understand very much these days you stay they stay with you and uh, they continue we've had not a single trouble of payments in this in this process that's Thank not to goodness. say we didn't have the uh, struggle of uh, survival of course we've had our massive survival struggles uh, that was my major question actually <laughs> when you have when you are so intense about design thinking process and this sort of a diversity yeah. definitely there would be a slump where we just have a designs and we have to go on then how did you manage those sort of a situation definitely those situations might have come to me yes definitely uh, they have come many times and uh, uh, sometimes i call them some of my projects i call them my butter projects and some are my bread projects <laughs> so those are the moments you shift to the bread projects you let the butter be because there you have to survive so um then you move into your butter projects you do your butter projects and you let the you know sorry the bread projects and you let the butter sort of ferment a bit more uh, so you have to have that distinction i mean i think we all struggle through them and um, um, i clearly clearly you know remember fighting with my uh, friend and saying that i can't talk to people now you go talk to people so but this is what you do no you go talk to people i will just create i'll be in the background so yeah you know you take your you take your battles at that moment sometimes you do i'm surprised that you know after all these years how could the client say this because you know i thought they knew better mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes uh, uh, you do uh, you you the you realize that they actually understand much more than you and than you could imagine moments yeah, experiences thank yeah thank you very much yeah it's <clears throat> like uh, architecture is a lifestyle <laughs> absolutely i think uh, snigda wanted me to show that so i said okay this is otherwise i thought i could just show you my projects and you know it's done but for me it's a passion so yeah yeah um yeah any, yeah. any more questions yeah and <laughs> Yeah, students, you can write it in the chat box also. It's like not only like a question and answer session, but also like a discussion which Director Sir and Shaman. Yeah, Shaman's I have. think many students would have felt uh, like uh, uh, <coughs> what do you say, very intense. <laughs> so they yeah, might actually be lost them. in uh, understanding it for the first time. Yeah. yeah. that's when we got this session so yeah. that we can understand once again right yeah it it also sometimes horrifies or frightens you ki being architect i need to do so much whereas my uh, parallel software engineer does 9 to 5 job and he earns as good as what uh, that also comes to my <laughs> mind because we are multidisciplinary university where we see a csc guy enjoying and our students should be working in the studio and slogging on the design for four months so this comparison is always there so i think they might be in that Traumas and other things in your diversity. I, I didn't want to traumatize them. Definitely the opposite. <laughs> I think the you know wanted to build some sort of a deeper uh, lot of sense, a love affair literally with with the built environment is the intent. The, stu the students' work that you have shown, um, they're very great, ma'am. And the photography was done by you or the students, ma'am? Students' work. Uh, yeah. Mostly. Photography. Photography. mostly students we we work with them to build their uh, communication skills so we teach mm -hmm. them through the studio 
how yeah. to photograph how to connect yeah. how to uh, so a yeah. lar- large part of the work is about the storytelling so photography yeah. is also a part of that storytelling exercise of how does architecture tell stories and how does your architecture what's the story you want to tell yeah. uh, yes <laughs> uh so yes uh i would like to thank uh, all the participants and all our guests uh, especially our guest speaker and all our faculty members and director sir for uh, being for attending this webinar and yes uh, i had actually uh, i'm i'm feeling so happy <laughs> that ma'am accepted the invitation and she gave such an intense like about her journey it was not only really intense it was so enriching it was um, like such a broad perception and uh, yeah it might look uh, but uh, but it was so positive and uh, mm. that passion for the uh, whether it's being practitioner or academics or both aligning together like uh, it was just incredible and uh, i have seen both sides of the chapter with her as a student also as her colleague also and i'm still in the learning process so uh, there are so many instances which i have sl- like i still follow what she said like uh, follow and also try to blend it mold it some way but um, like i was telling students also these students b- before uh, today's session so since two weeks only i was saying that you should attend her webinar like not only yours but others also because uh, each experience each person each architect has some story kuch perception is there like uh, some kind of experience every new learn we are going to learn from everyone we we say now we learn from people and all now maybe now i am teaching but i also learn from students and i learn from my colleagues my senior mentors or everyone so that is the best part and i i'm really honored and feeling blessed maybe i have done some good deed that i met you that time and still it's going and i'm happy to bring you here and this was very important so yes so moving forward like this was actually <laughs> my vote of thanks and yes i would um, request uh, like i will share you this recording also very soon so that uh, and i will upload the youtube link video also so that once again others can also have access to it because this was very much needed and thank you so much ma'am i thank you so much nikda i was just thinking uh, if uh, i mean if uh, possible one can even conduct some workshops with the students if they are interested yeah, yes actually yeah, yeah i wanted to propose that uh, uh, whenever you have time and whenever it is possible definitely we would prefer you be at our campus and do something for our students for a day or two we would love I, that yeah <laughs> see i mean in the in the spirit of what we were just discussing i would love to yes ma'am. there's always i and, and i keep telling my colleagues even now and uh, students also they say come and ask are you busy mm-hmm. i said i'm always busy but i'm always free yes <laughs> so uh, whenever uh, we can work out something i'm mm-hmm. i'm game always game yeah. i sure. i love the exchange i love the uh, you know person to person connection is very important yes, yes. and uh, um yeah, all of uh, uh, the seniors uh, practitioners when they meet students it makes a lot of difference to them and it makes a lot of difference to us also because we get <laughs> those we get that energy the one that it's yes. actually siphoned off it's not coffee it's <laughs> energy siphoned <laughs> off from younger minds <laughs> yes yes what we were earlier discussing so thank Definitely you so much i would be looking forward ma'am to working uh, with uh, with you uh, for our students i would love to thank, do that. Yes. thank you so much yeah. uh, thank you for having me thank you for the opportunity yeah and thank you thank you also, thank you so last, much everyone. last one request uh, whenever you have this sort of an exhibition or something if there is an invite we would love to be there in delhi uh, looking at your work if there are any uh shows or uh, design exhibitions which are going which have been designed by you you would love to be there yeah we're currently we working on one we're currently mm-hmm. working on one which is the uh for the uh textile industry so we will uh, actually it was meant to be in october but got postponed to breather to next uh, february i'll share yeah sure. i'll share the details thank yeah. you thank all you. right thank you yeah. thank, thank you, you so much everyone day. Uh, wish you all future prosperity and stay safe, <laughs> healthy, and safe, everyone.
So signing off today's host, Architects Nikola. Thank you so much.